Bayview Historical Society was founded upon the 100th anniversary of the incorporation of the village of Bayview. So that was in 1979. I'm grateful for the people who had the vision 40 years ago to begin the Bayview Historical Society. Paul Kolbeck and Audrey Quincy had both lived here for a long time, Paul all his life, and felt strongly about the, the uniqueness of this community. And I recall getting a, a phone call from Paul Kolbeck, who was a, a multi-generational Bay viewer, Bayviewite, as people say. And he said, do you think there'd be any interest in forming a historical society? By that time, he and Audrey Quincy, who was a, a transplant, no, she was first generation here, they'd been talking about a society. And I said, of course, I, I had nothing to do with it. I said, sure, absolutely. So they sent out notifications, and uh, there was a meeting to be held at the Llewellyn Library, and that was in March of 1979. And we all met, and I think it was over at the library. And uh, John Steiner, lived two blocks south from here. He at one time owned Paramount Records. He uh, gave a talk and showed uh, pictures, and that was uh, sort of the start of it. Paul Kolbeck was very knowledgeable and very, very helpful and, and did an awful lot. Anything that would further the society, he would do, you know, and it was wonderful. The other thing about Audrey Quincy that I mentioned to you was that she was interested in history and there used to be a harp street light over there. I don't even know if it's still there, but when the city came to take it down and put up those cobra lights, Audrey Quincy went out there to save the, let's say, not let them take it down. And she told those people that if they tried to take that light or took that light down, she was going to chain herself to that pole naked until the thing was returned. Uh, it was also, it was very informal. There was a lot of socializing going on. I recall parties at the Colbeck's house, parties at the Fenning's house, uh, especially at Christmas time. And those were, you know, we, we didn't drink to excess too often, you know, but it, they, they were spirited. And there, there was a lot of, very much a sense of celebration. I'd go to some of the meetings with my parents. All the members were my parents' friends. I mean, so it was always a fun time. If they needed anything done, you know, my parents did a lot of work. But I think one thing about the, the society early on uh, was how democratic it was with a small d. There was always that kind of receptiveness you know, to uh, kind of outside ideas and kind of acknowledgement you know, of people's, people's interest. So as part of the celebrations for the 100th anniversary of Bayview, which was chaired by Ray Ropel, who owned the old mobile service station on the corner of Clement and Oklahoma. There was a walking tour of Bayview, and that was held on August 25th of 1979. And there were over 200 people who attended that walking tour. Early on, one of the sort of breakthroughs uh, was the walking tours that the society managed for people around uh, the neighborhood and elsewhere. And early on, that was Ray Bethke, who was the guy in charge, and John Utzett, you know, working with him. He, Ray thought it was a good idea for a walk. And since that time, he embellished some of the walks that I had created throughout the years. Uh, but Ray added a lot to them. He embellished them, he conducted them. Uh, he was invaluable when it came to the founding of our society and the walks. Well, those two you know, were very important in terms of kind of sharing geographic knowledge about Bayview with the rest of us. Uh, now it's Ron Winkler. I got involved with the Bayview Historical Society in October of 2002. I attended the monthly meeting and I got interested in doing research for the walking tours. From that time, every year, we had another one of those brochures, which I researched and came up with a brochure for, and then that brochure was introduced during the August walk. There have been a number of assistants, and those have been Todd Smith, John Sternkoff, and currently Greg Wernish. I can tell you what my least favorite was, and that was the uh, seminary tour because there were no street signs to guide the way, and I actually got lost. But one of the tour ease got us out of the predicament. They're all good. I mean, each tour is different. I, I, maybe the, 
I think maybe my favorite tour was the area around uh, Rhode Island Avenue, south of Oklahoma there. Well, it's a pretty far-reaching community of volunteers. The board is the primary focus because they set up what we're working on and what's happening going forward, but then there are a number of other volunteers that help with events and projects and making sure the toilet works properly. <laughs> One of the great things about the society is the people. I mean, we've got this wonderful house, but there's all these people dedicated to it. And as with most historical groups, um, you find people who are sort of welcoming and curious and they cover a range of interests. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the groups here, the coffee guy, so it was like uh, Bob Quincy who lived in this house, John Ebersol, Bob Schwartz, later on Frank Mulvey, Paul Kolbeck, uh, John Sternkopf. So these guys, you know, they were, they were kind of this, 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 this one-man crew, you know, who kind of gather to tell stories, but also work on eventually the house, the Brenton house. The group had been going for about 10 years when I finally got involved and enjoyed having coffee and schnecks, as, <laughs> as we would call it. We did, we did a lot of work, you know, trimming the lawn and the bushes. And then we took down the acoustical ceiling in here and in the living room and uh, I replastered uh, that and this. Wally Olson was the membership secretary for probably 40 or 50 years, it felt like. <laughs> he, was, he was the guy. And he'd do these kind of clever come-ons, you know, to try to boost membership. And he, he, that was his job. That was Wally's job. And his daughter, Karen, uh, we had a contest early on for a logo, and his daughter, Karen, who was a, a teacher, she came up with the kind of interlock gear and ship wheel. You know, that, that's where that came from. And my job at that time was I was the fundraiser, and what we did to do funds was we sold note cards. The baby artists would go around and do the landmarks in their media, and then we would turn them into note cards and sell them. I was at either the dinner or a Christmas party, and Dick Drunick said, I've got a different job now, here, and he pretty much handed me the newsletter, and that's how I started doing the newsletter, which I did for about 15 years. Part of the fun of that, though, was, uh, and I still think it's a, a nice part of the newsletter, were having members send us in their stories and things. Other people, uh, Kathy Mulvey, Gloria Skorowski, came from the West Side, where they've been very active. And both of them edited something called the West Side News, and they kind of transplanted that energy here, and that certainly was great for the society. Don't know how I could forget having worked with Alona Bauer, who for a long time hosted our open houses. She also was here for a lot of the tours. What kind of things I did on the board? <laughs> Open my big mouth. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I always, I always had suggestions to bring the society to the next level, you know, to, 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 to modernize, to, to not forget the past just kind of blend that in nicely. I like having parties. I like planning them. And so I got on hospitality, and which meant, you know, planning the food and decorations, and I had some good help, you know, that Jane Winston and a couple other people. I think it's a pretty well working group, given the fact that everybody that is a volunteer is also very busy in their lives. Bayview Historical Society President Betty Palm was responsible for organizing the Landmarks program and the criteria was modeled after the guidelines that were established by the City of Milwaukee's Department of Historic Preservation. And interestingly enough, the Society's first landmark was in 1983 and that was the Beulah Brinton Home. So Betty Pum was head of the Landmarks Committee from 1983 until Greg Bird took over in 2001. And then he was in charge of the Landmarks from 2001 until John Sternkopf took over in 2005. The big, big excitement occurs when we bring the children over here 
and we have them hold hands around the trunk of this great tree. Uh, I guess we could call this a, a living monument, maybe. And uh, they, they really think this is fine, and they're particularly excited about all the history that's carved up on the various limbs. Uh, I hear stories about all those, but anyway. In 2009, John Mankey took over as Landmark's chair, and he was assisted by John Utzat during his tenure. So John Mankey was the Landmark's chair until 20, the end of 2014, when I became the chair of the Landmarks Committee. Since 1983, the Bayview Historical Society has bestowed landmark status on 25 different landmarks throughout Bayview. Well, the archives folks, uh, Lois Rayburg, Mary Herthy, Fern Cruzy, you know, people, largely people had long roots in Bayview, deep roots in Bayview. Uh, and they really made that kind of their part-time job, you know, to, to find these things and kind of catalog them so people like, like me you know, kind of use them later on. The Archive Committee met at the Bill Burden Center upstairs. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it was where the furnace was, so it was, they couldn't even meet in the summer. And so as the society moved all of that uh, to the Marion Center and then from the Marion Center to here. We do a lot of work in the archives. There's a lot of investigative work. So we have to come up with this item and try to backtrack and figure out where did this come from? Often I go and ask Janice Litke, who has worked with the archives for 30 some years. <laughs> the main thing which I still do is just look for articles in the magazines and papers and things like that. And then um, we have acid-free paper that I paste these articles on, and we have them in a, a filing cabinet. It's fun to work on the archives. If, if anybody out there would like to work on the archives, come on, we need you. you know? <laughs> When I first started um, volunteering for the society, I said, why don't we connect schools to the society? And so I started writing grants and we started projects in four of the schools and um, they were very well received and it was really a fun way to, for me to transition toward um, being involved with the historical society and connected with the schools that I had known and liked working with. Baby Historical Society um, provided a grant to Riley's Dual Language Montessori program and in providing this grant um, they hosted a holiday party that was it lit up the house in a way that made it feel inviting, welcoming, and warm to all families of all ages. Um, kind of connecting this house to children and students. It also um, helped us with the schools coming in and kids being able to tour there's a tour that was designed by Bill O'Brien. In the course of doing my tours, I did one tour was a cup for a Cub Scout pack, and we made it into a, sort of a scavenger hunt. They had a, they had a list of things to look for, and so we started outside. And they had to look for a certain molding and find something in the house. And the best part was once we got them upstairs, and then let, letting them go down the back stairs to the kitchen just utterly delighted them that there was this hidden room and the hidden staircase. So. That was probably the most fun. I grew up here in this house. Beulah Brinton was my great-great-grandmother. And we lived here, the four generations of us, during the war. Beulah Brinton was so well known in this community. And even when I moved back here oh, a number of years ago, at least 10 years ago, I still found people who knew her had uh, grown up going to the community center, the first one, even at the firehouse that uh, she had taken over, and, and some of the women who, who had learned to sew and cook and learned other people's languages and cultures because she felt, most of all, that people should come together. There are so many families here that are fourth and fifth generation families. 
And usually when you have a, a town like that, it's hard to break into it, you know? But the people in Bayview are so welcoming. And that was one of the questions that was in my mind as I started learning about the history of Bayview. But I think that is Beulah Brinton's legacy. She brought together the people who worked in the mill. And those people were from just about every country in Europe. And Beulah just brought them all together. I've always thought one of the most wonderful things she did was to have, in the good weather, of course, a dinner, say it might be a Polish dinner. And the Polish people would prepare their, their foods and talk about their customs in Poland. And then the next week it might be Italians, and the week after that Czechoslovakians. And so that people came to know each other and accept each other, and accept really anybody who showed up. And that is such a wonderful legacy. I just think that is the coolest thing. I love that. Bayview Historical Society bought the, this house in 2005. The people who had lived here, Bob and Audrey Quincy, um, had both died, and so their family put the house up on the market. We, we needed space for our archives. We didn't know where to put them anymore. And I said, we need to buy a headquarter. And uh, they looked at me like, a, like I was nuts, but I kept pushing. I ended up on the board and I, I wouldn't let them forget it. And then when this house became for sale, I said, let's go for it. As a twist of fate or whatever, at about that time, a member of the society died and she left an estate gift of $100,000, which was enough for the society to make a down payment on this house. And so it was decided, the membership was polled and it was decided to buy this home. And I wound up being president shortly after we bought the house. And when I took office, we had enough money for one more payment and then we would be stone cold broke. And we just did fundraising upon fundraising. I was so sick of fundraising, but people really came forward. The society then um, was able to make monthly mortgage payments on this house, but it was a struggle. We knew that we had to ratchet things up, if you will. So in 2012, we had a big fundraising event at the South Shore um, Pavilion, and it was a very successful dinner. Well, unbelievably, about a month later, one of our members called me out of the blue and asked me what the financial situation was of the society. And I explained to him that we still had a very significant mortgage to pay off. And he said, I think I'd like to help you with that. Then another wonderful twist of fate happened. 2014, totally unbeknownst to us, one of our members died and she had left in her estate plans that she was going to deed her home to the Bayview Historical Society with the intent that we would sell it and use that money to pay off the mortgage. And that is what we did. So the house was bought in 2005, and 10 years later, in 2015, the house was completely paid for. What's so great is that her name can perpetuate because the home is now safe, and it will be always known as the um, Historical Society's home and Beulah Brinton's original home and the activities are exactly what she would have wanted all her life she worked for. We now have a house that is paid for, but as anyone knows, with a home, there's always continual upkeep. And there's to maintain this 
uh, historical gem, we're always going to need money to continue doing that. My hope is that we will get to the point where we have an endowment for this house and uh, that that fund would generate uh, annual interest income to always help pay for the expenses so that it is preserved for as long as people want to have this home. We started working on a Vision 2020 initiative and that was really to kind of assess the overall um, mission and goals of the society. And with that, we looked at the house and how it could serve the society and also the community. We decided that it really was important to restore our kitchen and bathroom, so we're really looking forward to seeing these improvements to the house so that we can power ourselves into the future. One of my primary focuses as president, but also just as a member of the Historical Society, is to keep uh, that uh, spirit of uh, change and uh, new people and uh, some of the traditional and non-traditional institutions of Bayview in the forefront. So I would like to see a lot more younger people getting involved in a more rigorous way to keep the society solvent. Being able to pass on their stories is, is important, so I feel, feel like having new people join the Historical Society all the time is, is a good thing because we get to pass on the stories of, the, of previous generations. I just hope we honor the spirit of Beulah Brinton to always welcome any person no matter where they come from, into this space. Get involved with the Historical Society. Um, attend the events here at the Beulah Brinton House. Everyone who is a part of the Society has a passion for the city, has a passion for service, and really believes in the work that they do and making a better community and a better Milwaukee. I'm very proud to be a member of the Bayview Historic Society. They have been good to me. I enjoyed working with them, and it's been a good trip. One thing that makes this neighborhood and the society unique is that there is no other society in the entire state that exists to promote and preserve the history of a neighborhood. You know, so that really says an awful lot about uh, the integrity of the area's history and the interest in the past here. You know, it really is a very powerful part of Bayview's heritage and its present as well.